Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Um, I was talking to uh, some of the guys on the air the other day, and they were saying, how is this, uh, uh, this HF antenna that you've got at the moment configured? Um, it's just a wire antenna, actually. Uh, um, I, I just went out and bought a, a couple of rolls of 2mm uh, steel rope from the local hardware shop and um, swaged them together and strung it up between some trees. Uh, very high impedance though at the feed point. Obviously it varies band to band but generally speaking it's uh, quite high. Um, I think it's uh, oh, I think it's 400, 400 on ohms at, um, at 40 meters and it's I think it's higher on uh, higher on 80 and probably lower on the others. Uh, from memory, <coughs> excuse me, okay. So the arrangement I've got at the moment is um, starting at the antenna I have a 9 to 1 anun goes to the antenna that goes to the ground. Then I have some coax that goes back to the house. Now at the house Currently, I have the little MFJ uh, 945E, I think it is, manual ATU. So that's a manual ATU, uh, little matching unit. Give myself a bit more room, but I'm leaning around the camera here. So if my if my squares get slightly more trapezoidal, I hope you'll understand why. It's not that I've got new glasses, it's just that uh, I've got to lean around the camera. So then I put in a, just to be on the safe side, a low pass filter. I did a video on that not so long ago, uh, rated at uh, 1.5 kilowatts I think, from memory. And it's got a pretty sharp roll off at about uh, 40 megs. So below 40 megs it will pass all that with very little loss and anything above that gets uh, significantly attenuated. And then the radio. Now someone left a comment the other day saying, how is this stuff hooked together? And I thought, oh, I hadn't actually considered that you know, people new to the hobby may not know how you would hook something like this together. So, and if you're going to put an SWR meter in here, it would go there. This has an SWR meter on it, this uh, this ATU. Uh, but if you had a manual ATU without an SWR meter on it, then it would go there. So what you actually have is the impedance of the antenna, which remember is varying from band to band, at frequency to frequency, if you want to get nitpicky. Got a 9 to 1 anun. Now, um, you may have seen some people doing videos on this type of matching device. And these are rarely flat right across the frequency range from 1.8 megs to 30 megs. There's a bit of variance within these things as well. So because my 40 meter match is probably the closest, I'll use that. So, so that's 450 ohms. It's presenting 450 ohms. 9 to 1 anun converts that to 50 ohms, which is uh, quite a good match. Well, it's an excellent match, in fact, to the 50 ohm coax that goes along here. So, don't really need this in line. Can just press that button, take that out of line, or just give it a little nip if it just needs it with the manual ATU, uh, just to bring it in. Um, if it was, I don't know, 600 ohms. If this was uh, presenting, this 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 uh, the antenna was presenting 600 ohms, then um, the 9 to 1 anun is going to give me about uh, 66 ohms here. Now 66 ohms is much less of a mismatch with the 50 ohm coax than 600 ohms would be. Uh, so this is going to be, by, by using the anun there, I'm presenting an impedance far closer to the impedance the coax is interested in, so the loss in the coax at 66 ohms will be significantly less than the loss in the coax at 600 ohms, if you see what I mean. Now by far the best way of doing this is to have an automatic ATU there, where the anun is, and get rid of that altogether. So get rid of that there, 
and this is the arrangement that I had a few days ago. There we go. So I just had the radio. Now the, the radio has a uh, an SWR meter on it um, <coughs> that shows me the uh, shows me the condition of the load that it's seeing. And if you make that an auto ATU. Or auto, auto matching unit to be more precise that will convert whatever impedance is presented here at the antenna connection because remember it varies band to band frequency to frequency whatever that is it will convert to 50 ohms there and you have 50 ohms goes all the way along the 50 ohm coax through the low pass filter which is 50 ohms in 50 ohms out to the radio and that is the most efficient way of um, matching a random wire antenna. Um, uh, the reason I'm not doing that at the moment is I'm getting some peculiar effects on 80 meters with one, <laughs> um, with one, uh, one particular radio, and um, it's funny because uh, it's it's a, it, another radio that uh, is identical. Um, doesn't have the problem yet the radio that has the problem is fine into a dummy load it's a really peculiar thing but RF's getting into it somewhere maybe I'll put a put one of those ugly uh, ugly balance as they're called oh, uh, it's actually a choke it's not really a balance and, and put it there just by just by the input to the ATU I think I might try that or I might put some uh, put some ferrites on the um, extension lead the remote mounting lead for the uh, for the head of the radio, just just to see if there's any RF getting into that lead. It's quite a long one, um, but that's the uh, that's the arrangement. Um, so this is the arrangement that I was using up until you know, a couple of days ago or so. The arrangement I showed you previously is something I've put in place just so I can use 80 meters until I get the uh, problem sorted out. Um, this one is the preferred method. This is by far the most um, efficient way of doing it. Because remember, regardless of what impedance is presented here, this is always 50 ohms here. So the loss through the 50 ohm coax is negligible. Um, now I've thought about doing some uh, some other antenna experiments because I've got um, actually let's just get rid of that and I'll show you what I've got in mind. Um, because I've got a reasonable length of wire up, it's 57 metres of wire. I only had to cut about three metres off of that steel rope. Um, I thought I might have a crack at doing something just a little different. And what I, what I had in mind, or what I have in mind, is maybe trying this, um, this is actually a 470 ohm, resistor. Um, they didn't have a 450 ohm at the time but um, it's going to it's going to go to a, uh, a 9 to 1 unun. So you know it's going to be oh, um, it's going to be a little over 50 ohms isn't it so the difference between 450 ohms and 470 ohms 20 ohms you know 9 to 1 uh, what's it going to be 3 ohms out something like that so it's not really a worry. This is supposedly a non-inductive 600 watt uh, resistor. Whether it's going to be inductive or not at uh, HF frequencies uh, remains to be seen, but supposedly this is for pulse applications and it's a non-inductive 600 watt resistor. So have a little play with that. And what I thought I might do is I would have the, have the radio then the low pass filter. How's that focus doing? This is my old camera. I don't really like my new camera. I think it's rubbish, to be honest. Um, that's the radio, of course. And have the coax coming out. Uh, and then the 9 to 1 on on. Goes to the ground. Like that. Not a really good ground symbol, is it? Uh, and then it would go to the antenna, but instead of the antenna being open circuit at the end, I'm going to draw this as a peculiar shape. It won't actually be a peculiar shape, of course. Um, but I'm going to try maybe sticking that resistor in like that, 
and having that go to ground and see if that will give me a more and see if that will give me a more constant impedance here from band to band and from frequency to frequency just as an experiment because this is amateur radio after all and that's what amateur radio is all about you know trying different things um, now this will turn this antenna into a traveling wave antenna which means the energy only goes in one direction if this is open circuit like in a normal wire antenna the RF comes out here it goes along to the end and back backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards until all that energy is dissipated as an electromagnetic field or as heat due to the resistance of the wire with this sort of antenna it only goes from here round through the resistor to ground that's it um, what would present a, a, a more um, a more stable impedance here would be if this was actually connected to that but these are you know nearly 60 meters apart so um, I, I can't really do that I could run a wire across the ground I suppose but I thought initially I'd just try this just to see what happens <coughs> now I know these traveling wave antennas aren't as efficient and some guys at the, uh, the local radio club that I'm a member of have done some comparisons between terminated dipoles, G5RVs, that sort of stuff. And the, and, and the terminated antennas are always well down on the uh, unterminated antennas. Now, I think I've heard people say, I may have even read, the these are supposed to be no more than 3 dB down when you do this sort of thing, these travelling wave antennas. But from what I've been hearing, I mean 3 dB is half an S-point, what I've been hearing, um, it's uh, significantly worse than that. So it'd be interesting to find out. I've got a relative signal strength meter, so I'll do some. Uh, I'll do some tests. The other thing I thought of doing. Oh, actually, before I go on to the next, uh, the next thing, um, there are companies out there that sell these travelling wave antennas, and they sell them to the military, and they sell them to the. Uh, aid agencies, you know, in uh, Africa and places like that. And the reason they're popular is that you can string them up. Uh, the antennas, that is, not the uh, not the locals in the uh, in the countries that they're visiting to do good deeds. Where's my dots gone? I've got some dots on here. That show me the borders. I haven't rubbed the dots out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got four dots on the board so I can frame what I'm doing and they were just in the corners of the of the thing and now oh here we go there's one there we go let's get the dots back in right so the ones these uh, these companies sell are terminated folded dipoles so you'd have your 450 ohm resistor that will come along there usually with a steel wire goes along there at the feed point you have your 9 to 1 this time it would be a ballon of coax going away that goes out again on the other side same length of course just my rubbish drawing so I'm leading, leaning around the camera so 450 ohms 450 divided by 9 it's 50 ohms so the 9 to 1 ballon matches the wire to the coax, the 50 ohm coax. And you don't need a matching unit, so you can just string this up between a couple of trees, and normally you see these things and uh, on the website, they'll look a bit like that. It goes off to a support pole. This is, uh, this is insulated, by the way, that's not. This is just one piece of wire that goes up like that, another piece of wire goes up like that to the terminating resistor. There are some other designs that um, come back in here to give it that extra bit of length so it sort of folds back onto itself, it's sort of linear loaded and have the resistor in the middle. <coughs> but I've just drawn that uh, for simplicity really. So again this is a travelling wave antenna, the energy goes around the wire and is dissipated in the resistor. Uh, the energy that's not radiated from the wire is dissipated in the resistor. Um, requires, uh, requires no matching and the only thing with these antennas is uh, the shorter the wire the more of a dummy load it becomes so if you've got lots and lots of wire then by the time the energy's got round here to the resistor it's, all, it's already radiating you know it's radiating an electromagnetic field and that's how these things work 
So as a simple chuck up in the air antenna that will work, it will get you out of trouble, these things are fine, but they, they do not compare um, very well at all with properly matched or resonant antennas. So uh, that's just, a, just an aside while I was talking about terminated antennas. I might have to get myself a new board. Still, I think it was something like seven dollars with a pen. So I won't have to save up for too long. Right, there we go. Let's try not to move it this time. There we go. So, uh, yeah, um, at uh, where, I, where I work, we've got a commercial uh, Delta Loop antenna for HF uh, communications. And that, I've actually connected my 857 to that, because uh, I knew, obviously I knew I was going to the site to do a bit of work. And um, I worked a uh, station in Spain on, uh, on 20 metres with it. Now they're not actually supposed to be um, DX antennas, the Delta Loop. So the Delta Loop has, commercial Delta Loop, it's got a terminating resistor at the top. It's got a ballon at the bottom. I can't actually remember... Uh, uh, what value the terminating resistor is, but oh, 16 minutes. I'm gonna have to get a move on this only records for 20 minutes, but okay. Uh, so that goes out because it's a, a delta loop and it goes up to the resistor, does the same thing on the other side, like that. There's actually a lattice mast, 25 meter lattice mast that supports this. So this is what it looks like looking at it from the side. So let's just, for simplicity, we'll call that 450 ohms again. We'll call that a 9 to 1. 50 ohm coax goes off. It's got supports there. These are insulated, of course. And it's supported on a 25 metre mast. And these are commercial communications antennas. And um, they're designed for NVIS operation, which means near vertical incidence skywave. So most of the energy goes up at a very high angle. And they're very good for reliable communications over, I don't know, six eight hundred kilometers something like that but um, because there's so much wire uh, that's about 25 meters that's about 25 meters that's probably a bit more than 25 meters so is that um, actually no that might actually be 25 meters and 25 meters yeah might actually be no it can't be anyway there's an awful lot of wire it's about 100 meters of wire <laughs> in this and uh, because there's so much wire in it um, you know, it's, it's got uh, uh, quite, uh, quite good potential for radiating energy as the RF energy runs along these wires to the terminating resistor. It's, radi it's radiating off the wire. And I connected the 857 to it and I worked a station in Spain from, uh, from Western Australia with it. So, so they, uh, they're not designed to be DX antennas, but with that much wire hanging in the air, uh, it's always worth, a, always worth a try. You never know your luck, as I say. Very high angle of radiation really wouldn't expect this to work um, as, a, as a DX antenna at all. But that's what commercial delta loop looks like. All right, um, the other idea I had, um, actually I can't show you because I'm out of time, but basically it was just the antenna that I've got. Let's see if I can squeak it in. 18 and a half minutes, it records for 20. Will I be able to do it? There we go. Yeah, the other idea I had was just have with the wire antenna I've got at the moment. So I've got the nine to one un un goes to ground like that as the coax goes off to the shack. There's the antenna. And I thought that I would actually just connect the other end of the antenna to an earth stake and see what that does. Remember this is 57 meters of wire. And if you're 10 foot of wire, waste of time. 57 meters of wire, never know your luck. Might get something out of it. Okay, I've got 30 seconds to go. As always, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Normally I say it the other way around, but never mind. I'm rushing. Uh, catch you next time.